So to set up um, the context of our discussion, uh, could you first explain what technology standards are and their roles in the global economy? Very briefly, just what are standards? They are codifications of characteristics, features, and protocols that define products and systems. In effect, according to my PhD dissertation, because of standardization between product A and product B, that is what enables us to make price comparison and hence enables market formation. So when we talk about technology standards, one of the things that's very important to remember is that the inventions that go into these defined protocols are typically protected by patents. Now, if a patent owner wishes to have these, technology, uh, these technologies incorporated into the standard, they have to agree to what's called the RAND principle, reasonable and non-discriminatory. The next question is, what is China's overall strategy in shaping international technology? It's very difficult to define an overall strategy for China, mostly because China is not a monolithic actor. There are many different interested parties to standardization in China. Chinese firms also have very different perspectives. Some firms, whether state-owned or private, strongly support strong government-directed standardization initiatives. And others have actively eschewed and avoided promotion or adoption of unique domestic standards in favor of contributing to and producing for global standards. But if we had to summarize what is China's standard, it has been summarized in a document called China Standards 2035. So the basic principle of the strategy is to increase the prominence of Chinese owned intellectual properties in globally accepted and adopted international standards. If you could provide a more, I guess, um, summarizing view about the main goals of China's efforts in uh, standard setting for next generation technologies, and also how have these goals uh, evolved over the last like decade? So I would say the, great, the goal in China is to increase the hand of Chinese firms in technology standardization worldwide. And this, this is not really new. This has been policy since the mid 2000s. But in my own research, I argue that some of the hard lessons learned from China's earlier stages of producing standards compliant products, especially in electronics, the hard lesson was they could make the best products and have the most productive industry, but the licensing fees they paid because they did not control or help set the standards severely limited the profits of these firms. Considering the increasing geopolitical tensions right now between China and the U.S. and also, like you just mentioned, uh, China's increase in participation in international standards bodies, what are the strategic implications for Chinese private enterprises um, who are participating in those uh, st international standards organizations? One thing that when we study standards, we always have to talk about, especially in light of, of Chinese-US competition and geopolitical um, economic competition, is that even though we talk about American standards or Chinese standards or Europeans, today, no single country controls a standard as such. There are companies which have dominant stakes, perhaps based on their share of the embedded intellectual property, but it doesn't mean that the firm or their home country controls the standard as such. This is because you'll remember the intellectual property embedded in a standard must be made available to all in accordance with the RAND principle. So how successful um, would you say has China been so far in internationalizing its homegrown standards? China did attempt in the late 1990s and early 2000s developing homegrown standards, but historically these have not been well received within even the Chinese domestic market. And many Chinese firms don't really want to produce to a unique Chinese standard. So in many ways, homegrown standardization has been unpopular in China. But what my research suggests is that these homegrown standards efforts, while unable to be adopted as standards as such, were very effective in changing the, the language and the tone of the discussion worldwide on the licensing fees for embedded essential intellectual properties.